Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kylie Burton. If you have been told that your blood work is normal, yet you feel awful, well, this is the place for you. Because whether you have a diagnosis or not, I'm going to teach you how to turn those normal labs into real answers, healing, and hope. So grab your blood work. Come join me. Here we go. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. We are back after a little bit of a break so I could go have a baby and uh, baby's now a couple months old. We are here recording with a return guest, um, Nicole Lani. She has an incredible story about mold and we've already talked about it a little bit on this podcast, but we want to dive into what she did to get rid of mold because we now have a mold program and we are seeing such a high drastic need for this mold program. We want to understand more about it, but also to make your life easier from the kitchen. Now, Nicole is a genius chef, so much so that I'm trying to get her to move near me so she can be my personal chef. What she has now created on her membership is the next best thing. So stick around and let's learn not only from Nicole's experience with mold growing in her lungs, literally, but how she manages the kitchen in a way that makes cooking healthy, super duper easy. Nicole, welcome up. Thanks, Kylie. I'm super excited to be back on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So give us a, some background on this mold growing in your lung. Well, in 2001, my family moved from Las Vegas to California. And I didn't know, I think the only person I knew in California, honestly, was I used to joke around saying the only person I knew was Mickey Mouse. Like, I didn't know a soul in California. <laughs> and so I would go to Disneyland and I would go to the beach. And, you know, the, that's what I did with my family when we came to California. So moving here was like, it was such a foreign thing to me. So I think the first thing was for me was my kids were starting seventh grade and ninth grade. So one was starting junior high, one was starting high school. So finding a town, my husband was going to be working in L.A. So finding a place that was within an hour of L.A. driving time. And then having good school districts was super important to me. So we found this and, and I wanted to rent. I figure I don't know anybody in California. I'm not buying a house because what if I don't like it here? You know, so I had all these reservations. So we found this cute little house in this little town of Valencia and beautiful town and trees and squirrel. I know squirrels sound so funny, but wildlife in Vegas. I didn't have the wildlife like in my front yard and this house was adorable. So what I didn't know was that it was filled with toxic mold because you can't see mold. You use, oftentimes you can't even smell mold. And so I um, moved into this house and my all of a sudden my I sounded like within a month of being there, like I had bronchitis. I, the creepy, creepy cough. Um, just I, I was just so sick, honestly, within, within a month to five weeks. My kids started having some symptoms as well and my husband so my husband was having some respiratory issues um and they chalked it up to his job honestly because he was in some weird crawl spaces and you know that kind of thing um my kids had some um my son would blow up with hives and when i say blow up with hives like he was getting like he looked like the michelin tire man he would just get so swollen and then he'd get these hives all over his body and then my daughter was diagnosed with asthma and she was a track, yeah, you know, she was on track. So asthma and track don't necessarily go hand in hand. But what was interesting is we were all going to different doctors. Well, my kids were going to a pediatrician. My husband had gone to the ER because he had this incident at work. And here I am seeing, you know, a general practitioner. So it wasn't connecting the dots at first. It was okay, well, let's treat the asthma. Let's treat the, you know, why is he getting hives? Maybe something in the new environment. So nobody had pieced it together that it was actually mold. So after, and their symptoms would come and go. Mine were just getting worse and worse and worse. And so, and the cough was getting worse. And when I say I cough probably 24 hours a day, it was probably more like 25 out of 24 hours if there could be such a thing. I just, I, I coughed constantly. And then my eye, my left eye looked like, it actually looked like it was bulging out and it was purple and just the white, you couldn't see any of white of my eye. So 
the PA in my doctor's office. She was fabulous. And she said to me, Nicole, is anybody else in your family sick? She was really trying to figure out like what was going on with me. And I said, you know, this is what's going on with my kids. And this is what happened to my husband. And she said, you don't happen to have mold in your house. And I was offended. <laughs> now, coming from Vegas, you never heard about mold. Like, I'm like, and it's very dry there. So it doesn't grow as rapidly as it can in other places. And I was like, I'm a clean freak. Like, <laughs> there's no mold in my house. And she says, no, 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 not that kind of mold, toxic mold. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And, and how would I know if that was in my house? And she said, well, do you have any water leaks? And I was like, yeah, we have this crazy water leak going in in our bathroom and the plumber can't figure out where it's coming from. The landlord can't figure out where it's coming from. We can't figure out where it's coming from. But every morning I have a puddle of water in the middle of my bathroom floor and the walls are dry and we can't figure out where it's coming from. And so every morning I have to clean up this water. And she said, Nicole, I think you need to have your house tested for mold. So that's what we did. We tested. And when the remediation company came to test and they got the numbers back, they had never seen such high levels of stachybotrys in a house before. So they came in with these big hazmat suits and it was pretty crazy. But the cough was terrible. And so now we had a lead in going, okay, this is from mold. Let, let's get her out of the environment and see if it improves. And so that's what we did. We actually lived in tents in our front yard. It sounds kind of funny for about a week until we found a place to live because we were told to get out of the house immediately and finding a place to live at that time. The market was so hot. And so trying to find some place. So we ended up in an extended stay America for like six weeks until we actually found a place. But my kids thought the tent thing was kind of fun and we were camping. So we, um, they sent me to a pulmonary doctor who had some, a little bit of, a little bit of experience with mold. And he's like, I really want to do some imaging of your lungs. So when they did a PET scan, it actually lit up. Like you could see where it was. And he was absolutely shocked because my left lung was completely filled, which is what the coughing was. Obviously I was, couldn't get air. So his idea was to do a bronchoscopy. Let's do a bronchoscopy. Let's clean out your lungs. Let's do, you know, let's, let's get this out. That was his idea. So they did one bronchoscopy was not successful. Second one, not successful. Third one, I didn't wake up for about four and a half months. So I did go into a coma at that time. Obviously a life changing experience. You never expect something like that to happen. And, and, and it changed my family dynamics so much. And, and when I did wake up, you know, my, my question was, what do I need to do to live? I'm still coughing. I've now been sleeping basically for four months in my mind. That's how I, you know, I took this rest and I'm still sick. So what do we need to do? And so I think I have, what woke I, you up? I don't know. To this you day, just I, I, I just woke up. I just woke up and there happened to be a nurse in the room and I think she was as shocked as probably anybody because I think when some, you know, the longer you're in a coma, the less chances of you coming out, you know, the longer and longer. So I think she was a little surprised. <laughs> I think we both were. Um, and then when I realized the doctor had come in and many doctors had come in. He had put a team together. And of course, my whole thing was, what do I need to do to live? You know, I remember having this very emotional conversation with him shortly thereafter. And, and he told me, well, you need three things. And he said, the first thing you need is he says, you need belief that you're going to get better no matter what you have that belief. And he said, Nicole, I don't know what your faith is. I don't know what you believe in. And he says, and honestly, he says, I don't know if you believe in God, the universe, if you pray to your a rock or you pray to your cat. <laughs> but whatever that faith is, I need you to magnify that by 10. And then once you've done that, you need to magnify that by 100 because you have to believe you're going to get better. If you don't believe it, you're not going to get better. And he said, the second thing you need is my, me and my team that I fit together because 
we have done all kind. He says, there's not a lot of research on mold and we need to figure out how to get this out of your body. And he said, so I want you to always remember that you hire your doctors and you can fire your doctors. And he says, always choose doctors that remember that they're practicing medicine. And he says, I'm practicing. I, I'm learning. I, I don't know all the answers, but I'm going to go to the end of the earth to find them for you. I'm going to help you get better. And then the third thing he said that I need is some holistic help. Um, and I was like, what in the heck is holistic health? What is alternative health practices? I was clueless um, to what that meant. And he said, well, I think number one is we need to get you into, I've done a lot of research. I think we should get you into a hyperbaric chamber. He said, the second thing that I think we should try is to get you in. I found a nutritionist who's been working with mold patients and taking out certain foods out of their diet so it doesn't exasperate the mold. He says, I think we should get you into yoga instead of physical therapy. Um, so he came up, I think we should try acupuncture. So he came up with like all these different modalities of like, how do we get this out in your lungs? And then he was like, maybe there's some supplements we can take. Like he was so open to trying to figure it out. So I think at the point that got me about 80% better was the hyperbaric chamber and then definitely changing my nutrition. Cause I could tell when I ate certain foods, the cough was less. And then the hyperbaric chamber, I was in that chamber five days a week. Um, he had found a doctor who was doing experimental things with mold. So I was in five days a week, um, for a month at a time and then a couple weeks off then another month. So I think between all of that is what really helped push it out. It wasn't until I learned more and more and more over the years about functional medicine. I still, and it had triggered all kinds of autoimmune symptoms. So between the autoimmune symptoms and then still having some of these mold symptoms, it wasn't until I went more down the functional medicine world where I took the right supplements, kept on a diet, kept my stress down and did all those things till I actually fully recovered. Well, you had a, uh, a severe case of it for sure. Someone who is less than eight, how do they determine if their symptoms and diagnosis is caused by mold? So I think the biggest symptom other than my cough and what I see with, you know, now that I work with clients as well, is the exhaustion. So when you talk to most people who have had mold exposure, they're frustrated. They don't know, you know, they've done blood work. They've done... You know, they've talked to doctors. Sometimes doctors will say, it's in your head. You need to, you know, go on some Prozac or some Soloft. Um, but I think the exhaustion is probably the number one thing. And that frustration of not knowing exactly what's going on in their bodies. Because they'll do a CBC, maybe CBC with differential, um, and listen to mold clients and they just don't know exactly. They're, they have brain fog. You know, I, I actually had a client the other day call me and, and she literally was in tears. And I was like, her brain fog is just so bad. And I, you know, and, and I said to her, why are you crying? And she says to me, I couldn't find my phone for 90 minutes. Now we've all misplaced our phone. <laughs> and I was like, well, you just misplaced your phone. She's like, Nicole, I left it in the refrigerator. I didn't mean to laugh, but she was doing something and she had been talking on the phone. She opened the refrigerator. She went to grab something out. And she must have set her phone in the refrigerator. And for the life of her, she could not remember like where she put her phone. So, I mean, brain fog is a real thing. Like people think that well, brain... where she put her um, phone, but nobody puts your phone in the refrigerator. No, they put it on a counter. They, they put the it in the other room. room. Right. They put it in the other room. They put it in, they leave it in the bathroom on the counter. You know, there's places, but I mean, she literally left her phone in the refrigerator. And, you know, for people who say brain fog isn't real, brain fog is such a big thing and it's so overlooked. So when you have those symptoms of exhaustion and brain fog, and oftentimes people say their skin feels like it's crawling, you know, so they feel something under their skin. There's so many different symptoms that you can get. And when you've exhausted all of those things, 
maybe it's time to take a mycotoxin test. Now there's so much, you know, when I was, when I was diagnosed, it was back in 2001. It, ma'am, we've come a long way in 22 years. At least now people can talk about mold toxicity and now they have testing that we can actually see what's going on with them. Are they hurt all the time? Probably not, you know, in the, in the regular medical field. Um, and I think that's the biggest problem is people aren't heard and they don't know. So I, I, I recently had a dear friend of mine have mold exposure and, you know, her doctors literally thought she was crazy. They're, they're like, you haven't been exposed to mold. So she did a mold toxicity test and sure enough, she is aspergillus and there was a water leak in their building. She lives in a very high end apartment in Chicago and that's probably where she has it. But it's interesting because it is showing up on a PET scan as well. And it's in her lungs. So when it comes to testing, there's really two ways to do it. One is the mycotoxin test, which we will talk about further in another episode. Yeah. Um, but then the other one is the PET scan, which a doctor can take. And that's like an imaging. Is, it, is that the same test they would do for cancer? It lights up where it lights up. There's a little bit of activity. Yeah. Lights up. And here's the thing. Most, doc most doctors aren't going to do that. Most insurance companies aren't going to say, oh, you might have some mold exposure. Let me have you do this, you know, well, however much they charge for this test these days, $10,000 to do an imaging or, you know, whatever it is, some crazy amount for the PET scan. So uh, most insurance companies aren't going to approve that. So I think the best way is to, number one, look at all your symptoms and, and have somebody somebody in the functional world look at your, your blood work and see if they see anything going on. And then number two, you know, consider doing a mycotoxin test and change your diet. If you if you think you've had mold exposure, that's the one time I would definitely say, you know, there's some foods that you should probably take out of your diet. Well, that's the perfect transition. Let's talk about diet. What are those some foods? Like, like give us three of them. Vinegar-based products, anything vinegar-based. Um, apples, apples are a biggie. Um, and a lot of lettuces. If you're going to eat lettuce, um, you need to make sure to wash your lettuce very, very well. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that grow on on lettuce, including mold. And so you don't and cheese. You don't want to put anything that has like anything to have to do with mold or penicillin back into your body. But a lettuce can be very, very, I hate to say it, dirty, <laughs> and ca it carries a lot of bacteria sometimes. And so um, you know, definitely if you're eating lettuce, definitely wash your lettuce really, really well. But I would definitely take out vinegar based products. So, and unfortunately it can be things like salsa. It could be, um, ketchup, anything that has vinegar in it. Um, vinegar is a mold attractor. So those, those are the things and apples, mold grows on apples very easily, but the rest of the fruit is usually pretty great, but apples are one of the things you should take out. So vinegar based apples, lettuce, if you're going to eat the lettuce, wash it really good. Yeah. And cheese, things like, um, cheese, that's it. Cheese. Yeah. Take out, take out the cheese for a while until you get it, until you get your body. It will help calm your body down. It will also help take some of that inflammation down. Um, when you don't, when you're not feeding it, you know, we don't want to feed the mold, right? So those are things that will keep it calmer and, and keep that inflammation down a little bit. So you start feeling a little better, but then of course there's other avenues to go as well. Okay. Well, if you were to tell me to take all those things out of my diet, I'm like, okay, well, how do I cook without it? You have the solution. So I just started a program called Good Vibes Meal Prepping. And why I started Meal Vibes, Good Vibes Meal Prepping is because there's so many people that have diagnoses or not diagnoses. So some people don't have a diagnosis. They just don't feel well, right? And they don't necessarily have a finger on it. And unfortunately, our world is a world of convenience. It's a world of let me go through a drive through Let me go out to dinner. Let me pick something up that's pre-cooked. So, and then I hear, I don't have time to cook. It's too hard to cook. I don't know how to cook. Um, it's easy to order DoorDash or, or Uber Eats and have something delivered in. So those, especially during the last couple of years, during the pandemic, a lot of people, you know, DoorDash did very well and 
and Uber Eats and wherever, whatever else is out in your areas, wherever you're listening. And so it was very convenient to order food. But what happens is, is we don't necessarily know what's in that food and it's not necessarily healthy for you. So I have created a program um, that literally I will give you healthy food to eat for the week that won't trigger autoimmune diabetes, mold, that kind of things in your diet. Um, so you'll get five recipe dinner recipes a week. You get two to three lunch recipes that you can meal prep and you'll get some breakfast things that are great for you as well. So about 10 to 12 recipes a week um, where the people get rest, they get the menu, they get recipes. And then once a week, I'm going live in my kitchen. So I'm in my kitchen now and I will show you how to meal prep with in about 90 minutes. So not this crazy meal prepping that people do for I, I hear people say, oh, I've been meal prepping all day. And I'm like, well, that sounds exhausting, <laughs> especially if you're not feeling great. Like people don't want to spend three, four hours in their kitchen if they're not feeling well. So let's do this in little chunks and meal prep for the week. So you can have dinner in 30 minutes or less each night for your family. And you don't have to worry about the ingredients that are going in your body. Are they good for you? Are they not good for you? Do they have preservatives? Do they have this? Do they have that? So all the all the things that I've heard, we try to eliminate with these recipes. She's a very good chef too, so they all taste good too. I love to cook. I love to create recipes, um, and I want people to be happy when they eat. I want people to feel satisfied. I think that's the thing when people think of, oh, it's a diet or oh, it's healthy, that they don't necessarily think it's going to taste bad. So this week. Um, my husband and I had fried chicken, but it was healthful, you know, fried healthily. It was a healthy version of fried chicken. Oh, we had a, a sweet and sour um, shrimp over rice. Uh, we've had hamburgers. We've had steak. We've had chicken. So, I mean, we eat very, like what a lot of people eat. We just, I just teach you how to make a healthier version of that item. So this week we're having pot roast over the weekend. So we're just teaching you how to make a healthier version and not putting extra additives and things with preservatives into your food. Nice. Yeah. So you got the 90 minutes of meal prepping with them, which I think is mm -hmm. very helpful because that way they dedicate the time in the week to actually do it. They come join you. You've got, they're prepared with everything by the time you get on with them for 90 minutes. Yep. So what is that preparation like before you go live? Before I go live for the client or? Yeah, inside your membership. Yep. So um, what else is included in your membership? That's what I'm just asking. <laughs> so once a week, the client will get um, a menu, recipes, and a shopping list. There's links if they want to buy things online or Instacart. So if they don't have time to go grocery shopping, they can buy some of it on Amazon or Thrive Market or have their groceries delivered to them. So most areas do have Instacart and they can have their choice of stores that they shop at. So I, I'm making it as easy as possible for them where they get step by step. There are some, what everybody says, well, how many meal prepping containers do I need? You don't need a lot of meal prepping containers. If you have a few you know, they're like divided glass dishes. I do have those on the website so people can purchase them inexpensively. Ball canning jars are amazing for meal prepping. So inexpensive and most people know what a ball canning jar is. So I recommend two different sizes. Those are fantastic um, to use. So you don't even have to spend a lot of money buying like all you, you see all these videos on TikTok and YouTube and they have all these great meal prepping containers you don't need all of that so we're making it as simple as possible and then that's it they get their groceries and have them on a counter or where in their kitchen and then i will go live and they can meal prep with me so i will show them step by step like look you're going to cut up this onion you're going to do this you're going to do this so during the week all you have to do is this and they have the directions on how to cook things during the week as well super easy so we're trying to take the guesswork out so even with somebody with extreme brain fog can follow this simple list. And if they can't hop on live with me, um, I'm, I go live on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if they cannot go on live with me, it does get recorded and it goes into that portal. 
So they can do it on Monday or Tuesday afternoon. And of course, they can always email if they have questions about something because there are some inexperienced cooks that are like, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> so you can email me. We'll answer. We're really good about checking emails about twice a day. Though when, when her and I were kind of creating this, I just gave her the idea. She's ran with it. Um, I told her a price tag. <laughs> you did. I think she's crazy for going anywhere between like less than 247 bucks. Um, so she's crazy because this price and the investment into this membership is a no brainer. It's a no brainer. It's $47 a month. And here's yeah. my guarantee. Yeah, 47 You'll... bucks a month. Like that's less than one trip to Arby's. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I took my, I did take my grandson because I'm human. I took my grandson to in and out Burger the other day. And now it's kind of funny. I didn't order anything for myself, but I was drooling. I knew I already had dinner at home cooking. <laughs> and so I love the smell of in and out Burger, but I didn't buy it. But I bought for my daughter and for my grandson. And it was almost $30 at in and out So for two people, by the time they get their fries and their drink and, you know, all that other stuff. So... Um, so my guarantee is not only a lot of people think cooking healthy is more expensive, but when you eat nutrient dense fo dense foods, you find out you actually eat less food throughout the day because you're not eating all those empty carbs. And so you're not snacking as much. Um, but I can promise you, you're going to save more than $47 a month on the food and the recipes and the time you spend out and the time you spend in drive through lines and sitting at a restaurant waiting for your food. Or getting fast food and coming home and it not being what you ordered. Those things happen. And like I said, if I could hire a personal chef, she would be the girl. So this is like the next best thing. But right. I have to have you like, hey, when you're ordering your ingredients, order some from my, send it to my house and I will cook. All right, Nicole, where do they find out about this? You can go to goodvibesmealprepping.com. All the information's there. You just fill out your information, put in a credit card and hop on the following week. So the following Sunday. It is there a timeline that they have to stay attached to it? To try it out for 30 days. And if you don't love it, there's no obligation actually. We just want you to share this with friends and family. And, and once you love it, we have an affiliate program. Believe it or not, I'm $47. We have an affiliate program as well. So if you're a practitioner listening to this, yes. so hit her up. Where do they find that affiliate program? On the affiliate program, you go to goodvibesmealprepping.com forward slash practitioner. And there's just a little application there. And you can make a substantial little side hustle <laughs> with this as well for the practitioners. Honestly, everybody's looking for a side hustle, right? That seems to be the, the word of 2024. I've heard side hustle so many times in the last few weeks um, because everybody's looking for something. So imagine if you have like, your patients that you really don't have the time to walk them hand in hand of eating healthy food. You can just have them, you know, join my program. Um, and whether they're keto or they need to lose weight or they need to gain weight, this is going to help them. So a lot of people are like, well, what if I need to gain weight? What if I need to lose weight? What if they're autoimmunal? What if they have diabetes? What if they have heart disease? Awesome. Send them my way. So send them in, get them in there, share with them. And then you know, make a few dollars on the back end. If you have 50 patients a month in there, you're going to make like sixteen, seventeen thousand $17,000 a year with some of the bonuses that I'm giving practitioners as well. That's, that's a no-brainer, guys. So no-brainer. So make everybody's life easier by having Nicole tell us what to cook and how to cook it. And then it's like every time we have, what's for dinner? Oh, it's already done. Already solved. It's already solved. And for... And for lunch and, and breakfast, too. All right, y'all. You heard it. She healed herself from mold. There, She knows all the intricacies around mold and a lot of other things, too, especially in the kitchen, taking very good recipes and making them healthy versions. So go to goodvibesmealprepping.com. Hey, if you're new here, welcome aboard. 
If you're coming back, welcome back. I'm coming back as well. In fact, we're going to have new episodes every Wednesday right here on the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. If you love what you just listened to and love what you've been listening to, I would be honored to have you leave a review. Leave it on the place where you listen to your podcast so that way more people can find this podcast and get answers from their blood work as well. I'm Dr. Kylie and I'll see you next week.